as I lay down in my bed, I think of your goodness, all the things that you have said, have said, things that you promised, you never strayed, never strayed away. From your word, that is why I say that. Oh, why? Forever and always, I will worship. Hallelujah. Good morning. My heart desires to be more like you. Um, it's amazing how our marching God have apostle, which is behind the scenes, and he sends good morning and great greetings to you all. Um, his songs, one of his songs always kind of line up with what God gives me. Um and one of the lines in the song is, my heart desires to be more like you. And for what I'm going to talk about this morning is desiring the sincere milk of the word. That's how um, our heart can desire to be more like God. Um, but I pray everyone had a great, great, great weekend. Pray that everybody has an ama had an amazing day. Um, yesterday, the sun shined. And um, we are looking forward to a God sent today on today. Um, quick announcements. As you know, as you know, if you have not hopped on Tuesdays, please get on there. It is getting so good week after week. Um, and it is challenging us. It is pushing us. Um I can even say for myself, from the teachings, um, I myself went through one of the tests where I had to literally apply the teaching. Um, so please hop on 7.30 Tuesday nights and I pray and do start on time, which is good. Um, and we may carry over for prayer. So um, I feel like I just want to make that announcement. If you've been trying to hop on for prayer um, at eight o'clock, that's because we're still carrying on in the um, journey through scripture. So hop on journey through scripture at 730 so that you can be partakers in that lesson and um, being blessed. Men, don't forget um, you have your um, space in your place, which is Thursday nights at 7 p.m., the Watchmen. So please, um, if you haven't invited any males, get them on there. Um, they are doing a phenomenal job from what I understand and from what I'm hearing. And um, 
the men need that. The men truly, truly, truly need that. A community of men that bands together is powerful. It is powerful. Um, so invite, get them on there. And of course, we all know um, every night from 8 to 8.30, um, it is prayer from 8 to 8.30, uh, Monday through Friday. Then we also have the retreat. We are coming fastly. Um, we are in April already. Please lock in your rooms. I believe you have to the end of April to do so. So you, um, because those rooms are going to fill up, like we've been saying, they have a lot of tournaments that go on down there around the time of the year that we're going down there. And those rooms do fill up very fast. So you have this month to get those rooms locked in. You do not have to put any money on those rooms, not until you arrive. And if you haven't registered, um, I have to remind myself to register. Um, registration is still going on for He Restores My Soul. So please, um, if you are attending to go, if you are looking to go, get your registration and um, we are still um, doing registration. And um, I believe that's the announcement. Um, so, oh no, um, we have one more announcement. Um, we had just added this on. Some of you may have been seeing the social cards. Um, Task Trent, um, Trenton Area Soup Kitchen. Their acronym is TASK. And we are donating, we're collecting a donation for that. Um, Tam, if you on here or someone from the team, can you put, um, the, uh, there's the social card. Um, and on there is a ways to give. And when you do give in the note section, put in um, hygiene um, bags. So we're we're going to create hygiene bags. And we take them over. This is um, take it over to this establishment for the children, for the parent, um, and the parents. We're going to do hygiene bags for them. So you'll start seeing our social cards pop up on social media for those various things as well. So um, those things are, and keep those things in mind. Mark your calendars for those things, um, and um, we're going to get started. Um, because we don't want too much time to get away from us. But I did want to make sure, because I don't know who's new on here. If you are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope that you um, come again. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Father, I bless you. Father, I thank you and I honor you for who you are. We give you all glory. We give you all the praise that is due only to your name and your name only. We surrender ourselves onto you this morning as we've waken up to give you the first fruit of the day. And Father, we ask that you would just have your way on this morning. Say what you want to say. Say what you need to say on this morning as I remove myself and as I surrender and submit my tongue and my lips unto you, unto Holy Spirit. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to be the topic I'm coming from in the scripture, main base scripture that I'm coming from is first Peter two, two, verses two and three, desiring the sincere, desiring the sincere milk of the word. And we are in a time and we are in a, a, a place where we have to have the sincere milk. We have to have the sincere desire of the pure, rich, unadulterated word of God. And when you look at the scripture, um, you have the NLT says crave instead of desire. And when you look at the word crave, it says to long for, to want greatly. And then when you look at the King James and the New King James Version, it says to desire, which is to ask for. But both these um, translations, the meaning is long for greatly for the word of God. So I'm going to go there now. Um, First Peter 2, 2 and 
two and three. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to go ahead and start from verse one. And I'm reading from the NLT. So to get rid of all evil behavior, be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation cry out for this nourishment cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the lord's kindness so once you've had the taste of god cry out for this nourishment and what does a baby do when they're hungry they constantly cry out to be fed constantly cry out to be fed so we're supposed to crave it. We're supposed to desire it. We're supposed to yearn for it. We're supposed to. That's what gives us that tenacity to chase down the word of God. We're supposed to desire it as babies. And I looked at that and I looked at the quality of babies. And I said, Lord, this is this is kind of in my alley. Why? Because I am a breast, I'm a, 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 a CLC, a, a certified lactation counselor. So what I do is help moms with breastfeeding. So when I sat with that, and when you look at milk, I'm going to go back and forth spiritually and naturally. So kind of bear with me because I do believe that the spirit and the natural balances itself, especially when we want to gain for understanding of what God wants to reveal. So when we look at milk and, and, and you look at how people are delivering the word today, because the milk is the symbolicness of symbolicness of the word of God. So we have people today who are delivering the word of God to meet their fancy and to meet their pockets. And that's what God wants us to stay away from. And I'm going to give you scriptures on that because I have one, two, three scriptures on that. He wants us to stay away from that teaching because it's not giving you um, the pureness and the richness of God's word. So when you look at it in the natural, um, when when you look at babies, there's two ways, there's two forms of milk a baby can have. A baby can have uh, man-made milk or they can have what's natural, breast milk from a mother. And when I, and, and, and knowing that from from the from teaching it on it all the time, when you look at they call it cow's milk for what we what we use daily for our cereal or whatever, we are the only species that drink milk outside of our kind. I'm 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 I'm, I'm tying it in. If you just bear with me, we are the only species that drink milk out of our kind. We are the only sector of faith that will accept any type of teaching. Muslims are faithful to what they are taught. They don't go outside of that. Harry Krishna is all of them. But when you look at the believer, we praise those who teach it correctly. We pray, we hop on those who wants to teach prosperity and don't want to teach how to live holy. So Christians, so to speak, like to hop on man-made milk. When you have breast milk, that's the source that comes from a greater source. <laughs> Breast milk is a source of milk that comes from a greater source. The word of God comes from a greater source, which is God. 
when you look at the ingredients, now let's go back to babies. When you look at the ingredients and what we give babies, is powdered milk. Not too many people breastfeed. I see a slow rise of it because I teach it daily. I see a slow rise of women wanting to give that greater milk, give that greater substance. <laughs> give that greater substance and no longer want to give that man-made milk. Man-made milk, that powder, is contaminated once our hands go in it, whether you wash it or not. Man-made milk only have six ingredients. The, I had to laugh at that. I was up early this morning. I had to laugh at that because I never caught that spiritually until early this morning. Man-made milk in that powder can has six ingredients. That's the number of man. <laughs> That's the number of man. Six ingredients. Six. And they're artificial ingredients. But breast milk, and if anyone on here who is a mother and who has breast milk, they understand what I'm saying. It's called liquid gold. Why is it called liquid gold? It has medically over 200 natural ingredients because it comes from where? The body. The body. I have about 14, 16 listed, but it comes from the body. What breast milk can do, I'm tying it in, give me a minute. What breast milk does that powdered human milk will never do, breast milk acts as an antibody, a diuretic. It... um. It has everything. The only thing, it has all the vitamins in it except for vitamin D. Why? Because we all know vitamin D comes from the sun. <laughs> from the sun. So even God created, God created a woman's body to nurture her children in such a way that he still gets the glory and the glory alone. Because once a baby is 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 um, um, immune and drinking the powdered milk, they now succumb to obesity. They now succumb to um, a lot of um, illnesses, colic, all of that stuff. So now, as a baby, they gotta fight through all of that through powdered milk. But breast milk gives them a fighting chance. There's different phases of breast milk. We have the colostrum, which is the richest and the richest and the richest of the antibodies. So it protects them. It actually gives them their first immunization. Regardless what the doctor says, the colostrum is given, God made the colostrum to immune the baby system for the first two weeks of their life. Then it switches back and forth from translucent to is four milk and high milk. Four milk is a little translucent. That's because it gives more water. So it now it's the baby gets the water that a water that quenches the thirst. Still getting all the enzymes in anybody's. Then when you get to the high milk, that's where all the fat and the calorie content is. All natural, all natural. So what God wants us to do, he wants us to get everything from him, everything from him. That's what this scripture is saying. First Peter 2, 2, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk. 
pure spiritual milk. We don't want man-made doctrine. We don't want man-made teaching. We don't want man-made uh, uh, name and acclaim it. We don't want man-made um, uh, because if you if you be careful, this is why, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is why we got to desire the sincere milk of God, the word of God, because there are people that are prophesying and speaking, but they're cleverly putting a, a, a wicca attached to it. All uh, uh, they're, they're carefully talking about, you can manifest. You can't manifest not one thing. Not one thing. If God does not desire for it to come to into fruition, it's not happening. So if you are manifesting and you're having that speech, now you're into that 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 uh, Wicca and you're practicing witchcraft. But you won't know it if you're not desiring and craving the pure spiritual milk, meaning the word of God. If we are not getting in this word for ourselves, if we are not searching scripture ourselves and asking God to give us understanding of it, we won't recognize when we see someone giving us man made milk. Let's go to Romans 16 18. Because God warns us, warns us to stay away from it. Why does he warns us? Because it's, 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 it's detrimental to our walk. It could do a lot of damage. It could do a lot of damage. It can get us tripped up. It can get us lost. Actually, I'm going to start at 17. Romans 16. And I'm going to start at 17. And now I make one more appeal. This is Paul talking. My dear brothers and sisters, watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. Man-made milk. Why? Because powdered milk promotes, it's, it's close to breast milk. There's no such thing. There is no such thing. The closest thing to breast milk is another woman's breast milk. But they're teaching this. Let's go to First Timothy. Six. And four. Anyone who teaches different is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. This stirs up arguments ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicion. Verse 5. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt and they have turned their backs on the truth. To them, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. They know how to trick you up. They know how to master it and kind of mask it. So if you don't hear it, you'll miss it, that they're not teaching holiness. Because they're promoting something different. And they appease the flesh. But they're not putting you to the foot of Jesus. They're not putting you face to face with God. Instead, they're doing the opposite. 
chase after wealth, build your own empire, go get this, go get that. And where is God in all of that? When do you have time to sit with God while you're doing all of that? They don't promote holiness. You will always hear it. Holiness is always the way to go. Holiness or nothing. Nothing. We can gain the world. We can do everything. But if you don't have holiness, then what? Holiness. Second John, one and ten. One and ten. If anyone comes to your meeting and does not teach the truth about Christ, don't invite that person into your home. Or give any kind of encouragement. Anyone who encourages such people becomes a partner in their evil work. You become a partner of their evil work. You become an alignment and an agreement with their evil work. We have to stick with what the word says. God calls us to himself. He accepts us. A little bit of tongue tied. He accepts us the way we are when we come. But then he expects us to grow closer and closer to him. And the closer we grow to him, the more things should fall off of us the more we should begin to walk in holiness. Holiness is not about what you wear. Yes, we should dress modestly, but it's not about what we wear. It's all about the heart posturing and living it out, living out this word of God. Because the more we are in this word, that's why we should desire it. That's why we should desire it. We know when our soul is crying for the word of God. We know when we have not been in the word the way we need to, because we have that cry like a baby has that cry that they're hungry. And the only thing that's going to satisfy that hunger cry, because babies have different cries, that hunger cry from a baby, the only way it's going to get satisfied is when they're fed. So that's why I like the analogy like babies crave desire. Desire the word of God. Because that's the only thing that's going to stop that spirit man from crying, stop the spirit man from grieving. Because if you, if you had a moment where you realize when you have not been in God's presence, you start to feel off. I know I do. I know I do. I start to feel off. My spirit man is telling me I'm hungry. My spirit man is telling me, feed me. Remember that movie, Feed Me, Seymour? Spirit man is telling you, feed me. Oh, yes, your spirit man will tell you that. That moment we start feeling like we want to snap at folks, that's your spirit man saying, wait a minute, you didn't feed me yesterday. When you feel grumpy for no reason, your spirit man is saying, feed me. Here's another one. You sat up under a word that did not teach anything. You walked away empty. Now your spirit man is crying. I'm hungry. 
because I couldn't eat and digest what you just fed me. Now you got to feed your spirit, man. We got to be careful. We got to be careful. Large platforms don't mean great platforms don't mean it's solid teaching. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that. We're heading into a season. There's going to be so much of the tickling of the tongue. And you might get invited somewhere. Listen to Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit may say, don't go. Why? Because that teaching that's going to come across is not going to feed your spirit, man. But Holy Spirit knows that. Holy Spirit knows that. We're in a time where we got to be so sensitive to Holy Spirit, so sensitive to God. We got to be so sensitive that when we have no, you can't go, you got to be okay with it. I don't even care if they sent you a video. God, is it for me to watch this video? Holy Spirit may say no. Got to be careful in this season. Everybody focus all on the eclipse. I was in a prayer watch last night at 1230. So the thing that went out about what was supposed to happen around 12. 12.30 last night, we didn't get off till like a little after one. I, I put all my trust in God. I am learning more and more and more why it's extremely important to put all my faith and trust in God. And I'm going to wrap up because I know Apostle got to get to the uh, um, airport. Desiring the sincere milk of God. The sincere milk of God. I'm telling you. I I after this morning, and I've I've been taught by men about breastfeeding and I've been doing it for almost 10 years but God gave me a whole different perspective on it God is so powerful and so amazing when he said we are fearfully and wonderfully made he made our bodies to rely solely on him for everything For everything. When I look at everything that he's put in breast milk, my God, only, only a God can do that. Only a God can create a body to have so much in there. Because here's the thing, when we take medication, that's not healing us. It only subsides the issue while our body is really doing the work. That's all medication is doing. Subsiding the issue so our bodies can do the work. So that's something for someone right there. That should, that should jumpstart somebody's faith again right there. That God has created your body to do the work. I know this to be true. We're born with two kidneys, except for this person right here. Didn't know it until I had a major operation. And she thought she cut away both my kidneys. Until she called my aunt, my aunt said, no, she was only born with one kidney. Born with one kidney. Technically, you only really need one kidney to function. But here was, here's the, here was the blessing part for me was 
when my aunt talked to her and gave her my medical history, they put a stent in place to work as my kidney while my kidney healed itself. While my kidney healed itself. My kidney. When she went and she found it, all she had to do is allow the stent to connect to it to a certain way while it healed and reconnected itself. There was no surgery that needed to be done for my kidney. When she told me, you will have to wear this stent until your kidney repairs itself. I didn't understand it then, but then I began to pray and I began to ask a lot of questions. God revealed himself in a way to me then. That's when my faith started shifting because a God created my body. I lived life with one kidney where most everybody else had two. And this one kidney I had could have failed me for I would have needed dialysis for my life or do what it needed to do. Because this was in a time where I was fasting, God allowed the kidney to do what it's supposed to do, what it needed to do, and I'm not on dialysis. My whole paradigm of God shifted then. All they gave me, they sent me home with these pills and she told me flat out, it's just to make you relax, but your kidney going to do what it needs to do. That woman, that doctor was truly got sent because she don't even realize how much she was speaking it into my life. And all I had to do is trust God enough and then lined up. And it did what it did. I didn't doubt it. I didn't go against it. And my kidney worked fine. My kidney worked fine. She was surprised I didn't have issues growing up. My kidney works just the way it worked before I had the surgery. And the surgery itself, that testimony is for another day. Because I should not even be on this live. I should not be on this live for the reason of having that surgery. Should not have. Being rushed into the hospital, he will go to full point. And anybody in the medical field knows that that's a major no-no. Answering questions like nothing's wrong. So... God is awesome and beyond that. And I'm still desiring a sincere milk of the word. Still desiring. Because God has an impeccable track record. Desiring a sense of milk of the word will walk you in a lot of stuff. And I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about mental healing, emotional healing, physical healing. Peace of mind because you've allowed yourself to have such an enormous faith in God. It won't be easy all the time. Sometimes it's going to be trying, but you stay the course. And you mandate your position. You don't throw in a towel. You don't throw in the towel. I think that's what happens. Some people say, well, um, I don't see it. Let me tell you something. As a childbirth education educator, the moment the mother say, I can't do this no more, it's time to push. The moment the woman say, just, just, just give me the epidural, I'm over this, baby girl, it's time to push. 
What am I saying? The moment you feel like it's not going to happen, take that next step. Take that next step. Don't be like the children of Israel. All they had to do was take one step. They didn't have to go through 40 years. The moment you feel like it's, it's happening for everybody else, it's not happening for me. Don't look at everybody else, but take that next step. Because this journey is a faith walk. This journey is a faith walk. That's why we got to have that word. That's why we got to get in that word. And we got to add it on. We, we have 5.30 in the morning. We have prayer at night. But you still got to add on your own time. You got to add on your own structured time with God. Some of us may go to various places for services. And we're doing the uh, Tuesday nights. And for the men, you got the Thursday nights. But God still... Still wants you to crave in a certain time with him. And it's going to be in the wee hours where it's total silence. Taste. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. Father, we thank you that you always give us the richest of the richness of your word. You left your word for us to read it, to dissect it, to meditate on it, to sit with it. We thank you for your word that always renew, rebuild, restore, empowers cleanses us, shapes us, and molds us. We thank you for your word. And Father, as we go throughout our day, watch over us and protect us, Father. Let us continue to stand in the faith that you have called us to stand in and let us continue to mandate holiness, which is a standard that you demand you demand, you're not asking. You're not a God that don't force, but you are a God that demands holiness. The Father, we bless you. Watch over and keep us. Bring us home safely as we leave out throughout our day. Watch over our children and our family, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because our heart, yes, do desire to be more like you. Our heart's desire is to sound like you. Our heart's desire is to look like you. Our heart's desire is to walk like you. We bless you, O oh Lord. For it is in Jesus' powerful, matchless name we pray. See you tonight, everyone. Everyone have an amazing day.